Health experts say this flu season is expected to be very bad. Hear what you can do to prevent falling ill this season. Election results in Nevada are finally in. Who won which and which party will have control of the Senate? Cold fall-like temperatures are here to stay all across Ohio. How cold will it get? Details coming up in my full forecast. The famous Christmas Story House in Cleveland is now for sale. What this means for the tourist attraction. We have all this and more as TV2 News at 6 starts right now. This is TV2 News. Orange County. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Erin Sullivan. And I'm Nuria Tortado. Health experts are saying this year's flu season will be the worst they've seen it in years. That's right, Erin. TV2 Sydney Brown has more on what the students can do to stay healthy this season. Hi, Sydney. Hi, guys. It's that time of year again. Not holiday season, but flu season. But after speaking to health experts and students, it seems like people are being proactive about their health this year. The weather is quickly getting colder, and as we spend more time inside, experts say sickness is bound to happen. Kent State sent a reminder to students this week about getting their vaccines. There's often that misperception uh, that people that are young and healthy don't get flu or that it won't be that bad if you get it, or also uh, the misperception that, oh, I got a flu shot one year and then I got the flu from it. The flu shot is a killed virus. You cannot get it from the shot. And for the most part, students agree with this mentality. I got it because it's like the winter is coming, so um, there's a lot of colds going around. And on top of COVID, I just want to be extra protected. <laughs> because I don't want to get the flu or get sick. And like me and my household all agreed to all get the flu shot before we travel for the holiday. I have thought about it. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> However, there are still people who are against getting vaccinated. But as students head home for the holidays, health experts say that getting your shot is strongly recommended. Because even if you get the illness, your severity of illness is limited and the, the chance that you would need hospitalization or that you would even die from COVID or flu uh, are greatly reduced. So the DeWeese Health Center is giving the option to make an appointment online or over the phone making it more convenient for students. The health center is like nice and convenient, so I like probably should just do it that. Uh, I got it at the Kent State Student Health Center. <laughs> Schedule it for the DeWeese Health Center. Yeah, so I'll probably be going there and doing it just in the morning. <laughs> I got mine at the DeWeese Health Center. The health center is open from 8.30 to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 9.30 to 4.30 on Fridays. For TV2 News, I'm Sydney Brown. Thanks, Sydney. Kent State Dining Services has a new service for students. Pickup meals at the DI or Eastway are now available and will be a year-round program. Students who are sick can pick up meals and practice social distancing. The program offers flexibility for students by allowing a friend, roommate, or RA to complete the pickup. More details can be found on the university's website. Now, with temperatures going down and winter is starting in Kent, Kent State University is holding a winter coat and clothing drive. Starting today through December 9th, Kent State will be collecting clean or new winter items, such as scarves, gloves, hats and sweaters. The donation bins are located all throughout campus and the donations will be taken to the Williamson Center, Care Center and Schwartz Center for anyone who needs these items this winter. If you're looking to give back to the community this Thanksgiving season, then look no further. The Kent Police Department will host a blood drive on November 23rd. The drive will be held at the Police Department on DePaster Street in the Community Room. Walk-ins are welcomed and all are encouraged to donate. To make an appointment, visit the Red Cross website or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. Hello all Porridge County in Northeast Ohio. Hope you're having a great Monday evening out there. I'm TV2 weather anchor Owen Amador Gorby with your Monday evening weather forecast. And currently in Kent right now, it is a gorgeous evening out there. It's a little bit cloudy out there, but it is 34 degrees. Feels like 38 out there with dew point at 23. Winds moving west at one mile per hour. It is definitely a gorgeous evening out there. Visibility at 10 miles. So definitely enjoy it. It is a bit cold, so bundle up as you're heading outdoors. 
And as we look at your Northeast Ohio temperatures, we are dealing with temperatures that are really cold. We are dealing with temperatures in the 30s, like 34 in Kent, 37 in Cleveland, Sandusky at 37, Mansfield at 37, Worcester at 36. It is definitely a cold evening out there. If there was any rain around, this would definitely turn into snow, but thankfully there's no rain out there, so it's just clouds. But it is definitely chilly out there, to say the least. It is definitely almost winter time. And let's talk about our... Um, our hourly forecast for tonight, we are dealing with uh, partly cloudy skies for your 7 o'clock, and then towards 9 o'clock we will deal with more partly cloudy skies, and 11 o'clock with more partly cloudy skies, with temperatures going down into the 30s. So that's all I have for now. In my next update, I'll have your statewide temperatures. Back to you guys at the news desk. Thanks, Odin. Dussel Farm and Feed Store in Brimfield suffered a barn fire back in April of this year. Now, fast forward eight months later, the community has supported them now more than ever. That's right, Erin. Our reporter, Alexandria Manti, caught up with owner Linda Dussel about the recovery process. On April 2nd, I thought it was an April Fool's joke when they called me and said, the barn's on fire, and I'm thinking, yeah, somebody's pulling my leg here. So I stepped out the door. Dussel Farm and Feed Store has been in business for more than 70 years in Brimfield. This year, they are getting back on their feet after suffering a barn fire last spring. It was old wood. It was 175 years old, so it just went like a matchstick. We had eight fire departments here to help put it out because we needed a lot of water. We don't have fire hydrants out here. The cleanup was a big job, and family and friends from the area came together to help. The barn was terrible, you know, it took us forever to clean that up, but we had a good staff that came in, showed up, did all the work we could. We've had several different people make signs for us to help with our Halloween displays, which got burnt up in the fire, and uh, they've come and uh, just offered to help, you know, cut up even some of the wood if there was anything left. Just different things, it was just, it was such a nice feeling, yeah. Six months later, with a new barn in place for the Halloween season, the community has been responsive once again. See this old bus? That was their haunted I was, I was devastated, you know, because this is such a tradition for us and for our family. Um, and I'm so glad that they're still going and that we're still able to, to come and have this experience. Well, we do this every year, so we've been coming since we were in high school. Yep. Um, so when the fire happened, we were so sad and worried it wasn't going to come back, but um, so happy they're able to pull together so we come back this year. The weekends are the most fun because of the food and the you get a lot of families out here. It's just a place to meet. Farm owner Linda Dussel says some of the fan favorites include picking the perfect pumpkin and finding their way through the corn maze. Well, we love the corn maze. We always do the corn maze. Um, it's always challenging, lots of fun. Uh, we were actually here last weekend too. We just, we, we love this place. So we, uh, we have a two year old daughter. Uh, we bring her here to, to get pumpkins. Despite the struggle, this has been one of the busiest seasons to date with the weekend's pumpkin festival being a highlight. And now, as you can see, it's, it's really packed. We get really good business here with pumpkins and stuff. And weekends are super busy. And there's always a lot of work to do. Owners say they are happy to be back to normal. It's fun to watch the happy faces. Reporting in Brimfield, I'm Alexandria Manthe. Now going to Akron, a Kent State alum directs a short film in the city and it's entering the festival circuit. Rabbit Hole stars Nate Friesen, a current Kent State student who attempts to balance coming out of his shell with an erratic home life. The film also stars Karen Corning from Stranger Things and Orange is the New Black. For more information about the short, visit rabbitholeshort.com. Are free COVID-19 tests now a thing of the past? We'll answer the questions later on. And two of the main leaders in the world met today. What President Biden and President Jinping talked about during this meeting. Rain showers will be coming in for you tomorrow afternoon, but how long will the rain last? Details coming up in my full forecast. The College of Public Health at Kent State University prepares students for careers in some of today's most exciting health fields. Public health professionals impact lives by monitoring clinical trials, advocating for mental health, supporting active lifestyles, and more. The College of Public Health also offers open courses for any major, including its most famous course, Zombie Outbreak. Public health students can even study abroad and are encouraged to join the Public Health Student Alliance. For more information, visit kent.edu forward slash public health. Public health, solving our problems together. 
tomorrow's news leaders. Today's top stories. From an award-winning student newsroom. This is TV2 News, truly Portage County. Welcome back. There are updates on new information regarding COVID vaccines and tests. That's right. Our correspondent, Anthony Leonardi, has more on today's health news. Hi, Anthony. Thanks, guys. I have some important information about COVID-19, influenza, and RSV in today's Health Minute. According to Moderna, the new COVID-19 booster offers significantly higher protection against the two Omicron subvariants compared to the previous booster. The company got its results from a study of more than 500 people of all age groups. Everyone was vaccinated with previous shots and had Moderna's original booster. They were later boosted with the updated shot months later. Moderna says all people had an increase in Omicron antibodies compared to pre-boosted levels. Sticking with COVID, free testing may be a thing of the past. The United States has spent trillions of dollars developing vaccines and offering free tests during the pandemic. The money from the budget is almost gone and predicted to be completely used up in early 2023. The Biden administration has since requested more COVID-19 funding. However, Congress has not provided any more funds. The fitness industry is making a post-pandemic comeback. Visits to gyms from March to August have gone up by 18% since 2019. At the peak of the pandemic, around a quarter of all gyms went out of business. However, the fitness industry is on pace to grow around 4% this year. And Planet Fitness has also added around 300,000 new members over the summer alone. A new study shows that ER visits for children having thoughts of suicide have been increasing. The increase has been happening since before the pandemic. The data was taken from January 2016 to June 2021. And during that time, there were more than 81,000 young people in the hospital with suicidal thoughts. This is an increase in visits to the emergency room by 59% from 2016 to 2021. Roughly half of the U.S. has high respiratory illness activity during flu season. Surges in respiratory viruses are overwhelming children's hospitals and causing lots of concern in parents. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more. Across the U.S., some hospitals filling up as respiratory illnesses continue to spread. But we are seeing high, high levels of RSV, certainly, and our influenza levels are starting to increase. While most kids who get sick this season will recover quickly with home care, some young children may need extra care. Mayo Clinic pediatrician Dr. Angela Mackey says whether medical attention is needed depends on three things. First, how your child is breathing. Are they breathing faster, more shallow, or are they working harder to breathe? If there are any breathing troubles, seek medical care right away. Matkey says to give your sick child medications to reduce fever, which kind will depend on the age of your baby. She says children who are more comfortable will drink more, which is key to keeping them hydrated. They might not nurse as much. They might not take as much be a bottle when they're sick but they need to make at least three wet diapers in 24 hours. And finally, Madkey says to pay attention to your child's energy level. If the child is difficult to arouse, seek medical attention right away. And when it comes to flu, she says there's one thing we can control. So I would strongly encourage parents to, if they haven't already gotten their child's influenza vaccine this year, to get it scheduled as soon as possible. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. That's all I have for today's Health Minute. Reporting for TV2 News, I'm Anthony Leonardi. Thanks, Anthony. Google is set to pay nearly $400 million to 40 states to settle an investigation, including here in Ohio. Users are saying Google was misleading them about tracking their locations, even with the feature turned off. Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost said the government should be monitoring Google since it is a common carrier. There are new updates on President Biden's student loan forgiveness initiative. After a federal judge struck down the Biden administration's student loan forgiveness on Friday, Anita Dunn, a senior advisor to President Biden, said on Sunday that the administration is going to win the legal battle. Dunn said, quote, President Biden made a commitment to people in America, not only young people, but people of every age, end quote. The election is a great win for the American people. With the races now called in Arizona and Nevada, Democrats will have a majority in the Senate 
and I will once again be majority leader. Democrats now have the majority rule in the Senate after this year's midterms. After winning the Senate seat in Nevada, Democrats are now shifting their focus to Georgia's midterm runoff in December. Now Democrats have control of the Senate, but it's unclear if they will have House majority. Election results for uncalled seats in Congress still have not been fully counted. 20 as of this morning still remain uncalled. Thank you, Nevada. Thank you. And listen to all Nevadans, whether, whether you voted for me or not, I will always fight for you. Always. Predictions about the control of the Senate, everything was decided in Nevada. Karen Cortez Masto was declared the winner of the race for senator from the state of Nevada, and with that, the Democrats got to keep and maintain control of the U.S. Senate. Republican Adam Laxalt only got 35% of the votes, and Democrat Cortez Masto got 60% of the votes. Cortez made history in 2016 after being the first Latina elected to serve in the Senate. Welcome back everyone. Here's a look now at your statewide temperatures and right now our temperatures are definitely on the cooler side this evening as we are looking right now Akron at 38, 40 in Columbus, 40 in Dayton. It is a little, slightly warmer in the cities. Cincinnati 42 but 37 in Lima is definitely a cold evening out there. Bundle up if you're heading out and about for your daily activities. It is definitely a cold evening for sure. And as we look at tomorrow's forecast, um, we will be dealing with cloudy skies in the morning, but then those rain showers will start to come in in the afternoon. I am not expecting any snow because the temperatures are a little too high for that, but we will be dealing with some rain showers throughout the day. But you never know. There might be a little smidge of, of you might see a little snowflake here and there. It's possible, but I'm very unlikely. Um, but yeah, as we look at your seven-day outlook, um, as we are approaching Tuesday, we will be dealing with rain showers, but then Wednesday, it, we will have cloudy skies with highs in 40s, and then that will continue into your Thursday and Friday as the temperatures will start to dip into the 30s. But then towards your Saturday and Sunday, we'll, we'll start to see some sun with highs up in the 30s. But then that will continue towards your Monday with highs in the upper 30s. So it's going to definitely be a, a very uneventful week except for Tuesday. Um, but that's all I have for your weather forecast for your Monday evening. Please bundle up and stay warm and dry out there. Have a great, nice week ahead out there, everybody. Back to you guys at the news desk. Thanks, Odin. Now going to Virginia. Police have in custody a suspect in the shooting at the University of Virginia that killed three football players and wounding two other people on Sunday. Darnell Jones was apprehended more than 13 hours after the shooting after he allegedly gunned down students who were returning from a school trip. Police said they have obtained arrest warrants for Johns, charging him with three counts of murder and three counts of using a firearm in the commission of a felony. Air show crash, Curtis J. Rowe of Hillard has been identified by his family as one of the six who died in the accident. Rowe was a 30-year member of the Ohio Wing Civil Air Patrol and was performing in the Wings Across Dallas Air Show. Pete Bowden, an Ohio Wing commander, said Curtis touched the lives of thousands, especially when flying cadets during hundreds of orientation flights over the courses of his service. His family said they remember Curtis as someone who loved flying planes and teaching others. The expertise of our investigators and the witness uh, marks of the wreckage and things like that provides us a lot of information, but there are times that we can not determine the probable cause. To we had an that. open and candid conversation about our intentions and our priorities. It was clear, he was clear and I was clear, that we'll defend American interests and values, promote universal human rights, and stand up for the international order and work in lockstep with our allies and partners. A highly anticipated meeting between China's leaders Xi Jinping and President Joe Biden finished with both of them being open to the restore of the relationship between both countries. In a three-hour meeting, both leaders talked about different topics such as the war in Ukraine, military tension in the Taiwan Strait and North Korean missile test. Biden said that they had agreed to further discussions and a visit to China from the Secretary of State is set to take place next year. Ukrainian President Zelensky visited the city of Kherson earlier today. 
Zelensky told a military formation that they are moving forward and ready for peace for all of the country. He told reporters that he felt it was necessary to visit the city to support the people of Kherson. Zelensky said he wanted to give energy from the people and said, quote, it is motivating. Now going across the Black Sea, emergency vehicles rushed to the scene of Istiklal Avenue after a bomb exploded in Istanbul, killing six people and leaving around 80 people injured Sunday night. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan called the incident a treacherous attack and said its perpetrators would be punished. Today morning, Interior Minister Suleiman Soylu said a Syrian woman is suspected to leave the bomb on the scene was arrested. The best time of the year is quickly approaching and later we'll have a unique way to wow your holiday guests this year. Two Kent State football players took home some hardware earlier today. See who won the Mac Players of the Week. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. Good evening everyone, I'm Matt Corrali and here is what's happening in the wide world of sports in Portage County and beyond. The Kent State football team traveled to Bowling Green on Wednesday night and took down the Falcons by the final score of 40-6. to Thanks to that, the Mid-American Conference decided to give some love to Golden Flash, is naming two of the offensive and defensive players of the week earlier today. Quarterback Colin Schley won the honor on the offensive side as he threw for three touchdowns and ran for a fourth. He's the first Golden Flash quarterback to account for four scores since his predecessor, Dustin Crum, did in 2020 against Buffalo. On the other side of the ball, the Defensive Player of the Week honor went to Marvin Pierre as he accounted for nine tackles, two for loss, a half sack, and a 33-yard pick six. Kent State hasn't ran an interception back for a touchdown since 2015 before that. The Golden Flashes will have their senior night on Wednesday as they host Eastern Michigan at 6.05. Keeping things here on campus, it's now time to go around Kent State sports and see how the Golden Flash has fared over the past weekend. The girls basketball team welcomed in Northern Kentucky and got win number one on the young season by the final of 77 to 54. Kent State never gave up the lead and led by double digits for all but 55 seconds of the game, with their biggest lead being 29 points. Volleyball dropped two matches to Toledo in the Max Center in five and four sets respectively. Wrestling competed in the 2022 App State Invitational and Jake Ferry won all three matches to take home the crown in the 125 pound division. Finally, cross country saw history on Friday as sophomore Brady Baugh placed in seventh place at the NCAA Great Lakes Regional, running the 10K in 30 minutes and seven seconds. That's the fastest ran 10K in Kent State history. For full Kent State sports coverage, follow TV2KSU Sports on all social media. Well, that will wrap it up for sports, but don't worry, if you want more TV2 sports coverage, including highlights and in-depth analysis of sports here in the area and around the world over the past week, then tune in to Sports Corner tonight at 8, live streaming right here on KentWire.com. For TV2 Sports, I'm Matt Caroli, saying wherever the ball flies in the air, TV2 Sports will be there. Good night. If you love to watch movies during Christmas season, this is for you. What you can do to get to get paid for watching movies this winter. Welcome back. One of the most iconic houses in Cleveland is up for sale, but this isn't just any house we're talking about. It's the house used in the 1983 film A Christmas Story. That's right. The house located in West 11th Street in Cleveland was officially placed on the market early this morning, but the asking price has not been made available. Brian Jones, the owner of the property, says he's looking for the right buyer to take care of it as part of Americana. Now listen up, this story is for viewers with taste. There is a green bean casserole seltzer. Ourobora is teasing their new sparkling water flavor just in time for the holidays. And if green bean casserole is your favorite dish, like me, then you can wow your guests this year with not only the best part of the meal, but also a beverage. The company says the seltzer has a sweet, earthy, and buttery flavor. How fun is that? Do you love Christmas movies? 
Could you spend hours talking about every single movie you watch during the winter season? Then this is for you. Cable TV is looking for this year's Chief of Cheer. This person will watch 25 movies during 25 days and record their thoughts about each of them to get $2,500. And you don't need to worry about where to watch them. Cable TV will give to the Chief of Cheer one year subscriptions to Netflix, HBO Max, Disney Plus, Prime Video, Hulu and Apple TV. We so have a here. lot of holiday stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, absolutely. This is exciting. How do you guys feel about the seltzer? I think it's I think it's weird, but you know, I think it's creative. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'd be willing to try it just yeah. to see how it tastes. Mm -hmm. You guys? Yeah. yeah, green all the love to everybody that's watching that likes green bean casserole, but I can't I can't get behind <laughs> it. I'm yeah. like, I'm well so I sorry. can. I feel and I'm looking into it. I feel that it's really weird to have food into a seltzer, but we, we should just try it, I don't know. I like weird things. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I was four, you know, and you like juice and stuff, I used to drink my mom's like V8 little cans oh, that she oh would yeah. buy. Oh, I love V8. You yeah. know, yes. which four-year-olds are not supposed to drink that. So you know what? Uh -huh. I'm all down for this. Uh, Call me weird, yeah. but, and what a, yeah, what about Christmas? Christmas oh, I movies. love Christmas. Christmas Christmas movies are fun. Like, I especially love the Hallmark movies. Those are fun. Which one's your favorite? Um, I don't know exact names, but like I know that <laughs> they're they're good. Like I just know they're good. I, I I'm sorry, I didn't. I don't have, I don't know exact names. No worries. What about you guys? I I love Christmas, but I'm one of those Grinches that kind of just waits till Thanksgiving to celebrate. I know we got the whole two TV in the back. You saw it earlier, but <laughs> I mean with the snow, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's great, but I I'm like, oh, let's just pump the brakes till Thanksgiving. I can't. Oh no! It. Me. I listen to Christmas music all year round. Yeah, like oh, I yeah. love Christmas all the power music. Too. I love Christmas. Wow. Time. Look at that. Well, that's, that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us. For updates on these stories and more, visit our website. And our social media platforms at Kent Wired. I'm Erin Sullivan. And I'm Nuria Tortello. Have a safe night, Portage County.